What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Bust Your Bookie Show. This is our WNBA edition, our first episode. I'm super excited. We've got Jeff with us. You can catch Jeff on Twitter. His Twitter account is JeffBuff73, and you can hit him up if you'd like to join his VIP. Currently plus 28 units on the year in WNBA, absolutely killing it. I went all around looking for the best WNBA person I could for the show, and this is what we found. So super excited to have you here, Jeff. Uh, we appreciate your time and your picks here. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bust Your Bookie Show. What we do here, we like to give away 40 bucks. If we sweep the card going a perfect 4-0, I'll randomly select somebody and I'll cash up you 40 bucks. All that you need to do to qualify, number one, subscribe to the channel. You have to be a subscriber. Number two, comment below, four and oh, give us the good vibes that we need to sweep the card. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep, I will cash up somebody 40 bucks. All right, as I mentioned, we got our guy Jeff here. He will be with us a lot doing WNBA. Um, so make sure you also set your notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, he's been killing it, and hopefully we can kill it for you guys on the show. Jeff, what are your thoughts before we get going? Anything you want to say about yourself and uh, your betting? Yeah, first of all, I just want to say thanks for having me on. Uh, first time on the show, and uh, I've been watching some of your videos and like the content. Um, I've been doing this for about five years now, uh, retired from the Army and looking for kind of something to do for a little bit of entertainment at night. So I like digging into the games. Uh, I do football, I do college basketball, and I do WNBA. Um, I have a private page for my football. Uh, got about, I don't know, 75, maybe 70, 75 people that um, are on my private page. We've been doing really good in football the last three years. We have been about uh, plus 40 units, and that's betting one unit for uh, for each game. That's college and NFL, uh, bowls and playoffs for the NFL included. And uh, yeah, th this is my second year getting into the WNBA. Last year, I was kind of feeling it out. I think I was like maybe 11 units ahead at the end of the year, which, you know, wasn't too bad for my first year. This uh -huh. year we're doing this year, we're doing really well. We're up over 28 units. Um, started off really strong the last two weeks or so. We kind of been right about 500, but um, yeah, it's it's tough. You know, WNBA is a little bit harder to find information. There's not as many sites. Uh, a lot of the injuries that the teams put out, they don't put it out until right before game time or, or the afternoon of. So you got to kind of pay attention to things like that. But uh, I've been enjoying it. Uh, I'm a big basketball fan, so I like to watch all types of basketball. And so this was something that I decided to get into to keep me busy until football. I love it. I love it. Well, like I said, you're up 28 units in your VIP. You know, we've got three games we're going to talk about here, two uh, specifically. Um, but I also, we can assume, you know, your VIP is not always going to be the same. I tell our viewers as what we give you on the show. So if you want Jeff's absolute best plays, you're going to have to subscribe to his VIPs. Um, you know, especially I think you've talked about it. A lot of injuries can happen that might not get announced till later. So I'm sure, you know, you might not be finalizing plays until closer to uh, official tip off. So uh, just another reminder, hit him up for his VIP. You can hit him up on Twitter. I'll leave that down below. All right, let's go ahead and jump into today's plays. The first game we're talking about Las Vegas at Atlanta. This game's at 630 Central Time. And we're talking about a total here of 166 and a half. What are your thoughts on this game? Break it down for us. Yeah, so this is going to be a good one. Uh, these two teams played earlier in the season, and it was early on when Las Vegas's point guard was injured. She's back now. Uh, she's been back for about five days or five games, and they've been playing really well. Um, one thing that I noticed right off the bat I went to look at the box score, look at some of the stats from the first time they played only 152 points. And this time they hung 166 and a half. So right there, it kind of caught my eye that, geez, this, this game is 14 points higher than the first time they played. So when I started digging into the stats and started looking at things, I noticed a couple things. Number one, 
Las Vegas is number one in pace in the WNBA. So they love to get up and down the floor. They shoot a lot of three-pointers, like to do fast breaks. They really don't have a whole lot of half-court offense. They just want to push, push, push. Well, Atlanta is the ninth defensive-rated team in the WNBA out of 12 teams. So right off the bat, they're going to struggle trying to stop Las Vegas. Their defensive rating is very low. Um, and then if you look the last seven games for Las Vegas, they're five and two to the over. And also for Las for Atlanta, they're five and two to the over as well. So both of these two teams have been trending the last seven games to going over. And if you look at the number, which is 166 and a half, um, 14 of these games for Las Vegas has, have went over this number and also eight of the games for the Atlanta dream have went over this number. So a lot of trends and a lot of things that are pointing towards the over in this game. And I, I just think that the number being so much more than what it was the first time is telling us that this game is going to be a shootout. Um, let's see. Also Las Vegas, they are 100% healthy. Now the first time they played, there was two players from Las Vegas that were not playing um, both of those, Alicia Gray and um, one of the other ladies that comes off the bench. So, yeah, I think this one is going to be over the total of 166 and a half. I love it. Lock it in. We're taking over in the first game here, Los Angeles at Atlanta as our first play of the day. All right, moving on to game number two. We've got three plays for you guys on this game. So it'll be fun to watch. It looks like it's on the ION channel. Not sure about that. Not sure who gets that. But fun to follow at the very least. You can watch the game cast. We're looking at the Phoenix Mercury, 12-10 and 10 on the year, taking on the Indiana Fever, who are 9-14. and 14. This game's at 6.30 Central Time. Let's talk about you got three plays in this one. Break them down for us, Jeff. Yeah, so on FanDuel, I had Indiana getting plus three. I, I think that's still available. Maybe are you, are you, I don't have my odd screen up. I don't know if it's two and a half now or three, but um, I like Indiana plus three. Um, this should be a pretty tight game. Indiana beat Phoenix the first time, 88 to 82 on the road at Phoenix. Indiana has been playing much better at home. Uh they are five and one against the spread in their last six home games, uh, seven and two against the spread when they only have one day rest. So here, both of these teams played yesterday. Phoenix beat Dallas and also Indiana lost to Washington. So they're both on a short turnaround. Indiana definitely has the better record with one day rest. Phoenix is only 500. Indiana seven and two against the spread when they only have one day. Uh, and then the last 10 games, Indiana has definitely been playing a lot better. The, t the, the games where they've been playing against good competition, except for the Las Vegas game, they've actually competed well. They're seven and three against the spread in their, in their last 10 games. And Caitlin Clark has been playing a lot better. She's starting to get a lot more comfortable. And when she plays well and they're playing at home, they've been getting some wins. So I like the Indiana Fever plus the points. And then my second play for this game, the over-under is 172 and a half. I think this is too low. It's going to go over the number this time. Right now, coming in the last five games that Indiana and Phoenix have played, they have went over this number, three out of the five. Seven and three on the over at home for Indiana, Phoenix, they have went over this number eight times this year. Indiana has went over this number six times this year. Now, when I pull up the Phoenix Mercury and take a look at their last three games, they've scored 100 points, they've scored 84 points, and they scored 104 points. So they are coming in playing some really good basketball. They've been scoring a lot of points. Indiana is towards the bottom of the WNBA in defense. I think that Phoenix is going to be able to score and Indiana is going to be able to get points as well. So I think this is going to be a high scoring game. 
I took over 172 and a half. And then, yep. and, and then for my prop, I think if you look at the box score from the last time these teams played, Caitlin Clark had, let's see, let me, nine rebounds. So the over under right now on DraftKings is six and a half. Now, Phoenix has some big players down in the paint. They have Brittany Griner and they also have Copper. But Indiana has two big people down low, too, that are able to stop them from getting a lot of rebounds. And that's Aaliyah Boston and Alyssa Smith. So last time they played, I think the coach might have gave the guards a little bit of guidance for them to come back and get some rebounds. Both of their guards last game, both had a good number for rebounds. Um, Caitlin Clark had nine and Kelsey Mitchell had three. And that's way more than what Kelsey Mitchell usually gets. And Kate, Caitlin had nine rebounds. So I think over six and a half rebounds is the prop that we want to take. Um, I looked at the points, but she's been shooting really good the last couple games. She might be due for a bad game. So I kind of stayed away from the points. I still think that she can get involved in the prop market by coming back and getting those rebounds. So I took over six and a half rebounds. I love it. I love it. I love it. Going to go over all four plays and then we will give you guys some analysis on the third uh, game. We don't have an official play, but Jeff does have some stuff to talk to you guys about, but a quick summary on our four plays for the show. Officially we're taking over 166 and a half in the Atlanta versus LA game. We're taking plus three for Indiana versus Phoenix. We're also taking over 172 and a half in that game. And then our player prop, Caitlin Clark, over six and a half rebounds. Those are our four official plays for the show. And then we're going to give you guys some bonus material. Talk to us about your thoughts on this Minnesota at Seattle game. Um, this game, let me talk a little bit about uh, this matchup here. 16 and 6 are the Minnesota Lynx going against the 14 and 8 Seattle Storm, 9 o'clock Central. Tell us your thoughts on this one, even though we do not have an official play. Okay, so Minnesota is a little bit rested. They have been sitting for the last three days. Uh, Seattle had a tough game yesterday. They played against Las Vegas at home, and Las Vegas beat them. Now, earlier, about maybe an hour or so ago, the Minnesota put out that Nafisa Collier is doubtful for tomorrow. So this game, when it opened, it opened at three and a half. Now I see on DraftKings, it's all the way up to five and a half. What I would say is if this can get to six or anything higher than six, then I think that Minnesota Lynx would be potentially worth a play. Uh, I would pay attention tomorrow to make sure that she is for sure out right now. She is listed as doubtful, but six points is just too many. Minnesota has beat Seattle, uh, three times this year. So they've played three times. Minnesota has beat them every single game. I know Collier has been playing, but Minnesota has been without Collier for the last four games and they're starting to get used to playing without her. Minnesota on the road is eight and three against the spread. Um, Minnesota also defensive statistics are top five in the WNBA. So even without Collier, I still think that their defense can keep this game close. And Minnesota is also seven and two against the spread as an underdog. Now, they're one of the top teams in the league this year. They're in the top five. So they really haven't been in the underdog role a lot. But when they have been, they have done a good job of covering going seven and two. <clears throat> and also, I looked into this. When they're getting five points or more, they are four and two against the spread. So if this number gets up to six, I would recommend taking a play on Minnesota Lynx plus the six. And I think that they can keep it inside of that number, even without Nafisa Collier. I love it. We're giving our viewers an extra bonus play with some great analysis. So we appreciate that, Jeff. 
Uh, that's going to do it for us today. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you would like to qualify for the $40 giveaway, all that you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit it right now. Number two, comment below. Four and oh, give us the good vibes that we need to sweep the card. And number three, like the video. If Jeff sweeps this card, I will randomly select somebody from the comments. I'll cash up you 40 bucks. Our motto on this channel is to bust your bookie. Super excited to start our WNBA shows now with Jeff. Appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.